What's going on guys? Fun with Knives back again. Got a very interesting review for you today because this is a very interesting knife. This is the Boker Plus Wildcat. Now, this knife was a gift from sometime last year and what a good gift it was. I mean, I love this knife for its construction. It's very well built and we'll obviously talk about all that. There's a couple of things that kind of keep it out of my pocket more than it should be. So let's go over the specs real quick. We've got a blade length of 2.875 inches. I love some of these sub three inch blades because they're a little bit more capably, capable of being carried more places. Your handle length is four and a half inches, making your overall length 7.375 inches. So a smaller knife, I'd say medium sized EDC. Um, definitely can get all your tasks done, but it doesn't provide the best grip, which we'll definitely get to here. Blade thickness here is 0.13 inches, so a nice stocky blade. And then your handle thickness is pretty thick at 0.63 inches. You can see that's G10. Weight on this guy is 4.43 ounces, which is fairly heavy for this size of knife. And to be honest with you, I think it's that ring that's adding a whole lot of that weight because the you can see the skeleton skeletonization going on on those full stainless steel liners. So this is kind of a heavy knife for the size, but I definitely think it's capable. Um, this knife was designed by Boris Menesherov, I believe. I'm probably murdering that name. But I've looked through some of his other designs with Boker, and they're very cool. I mean, like I said, uh, Boker puts out some some different designs that I don't think a whole lot of companies would would attempt to do. I mean, there's not really a niche that this knife fits, at least in my experience in the knife world. Um, but it's different. It's cool, and, and it's just so unique that I I really wanted it. And I'm glad I that my friend got me it last year. So, blade here is made out of D2 tool steel. You can see maker's mark here, D2 demarcated by the hole, and then Boker Plus, and then I'm assuming just a model number 1057. So the blade shape is obviously very cool. It's kind of got a clip point going on. It's got a recurve. I mean, you could classify this as a Tonto. It's just all over the place as far as, as classifying the blade shape. But what it is, is very cool. I mean, it's flat ground. It's got that compound thing going on. And with it being D2, it's going to hold its edge for quite a long time. But this thing is a pain in the ass to sharpen. I mean, this portion here, obviously, very easy to sharpen. This recurve, as we knife people know, is just it's, just, it's a pain. That's all there is to it. But it definitely looks the part and is actually very functional. I mean, it's not going to be as functional as your classic drop point. But it surprised me with this point here. When I was cutting open boxes and things, I would just use that point, just kind of that draw cut. Uh, this point here was good for... The push cuts, you know, if I was doing lunch tasks and crap like that. And then this recurve portion here was good for cutting paracord, you know, if I'm wrapping a, a skeletonized knife or stuff like that. So has a variety of applications, and I definitely think this knife looks tactical. And we'll circle back to that for sure. Now, the action on this knife is nothing short of amazing. Got a large flipper tab here. This is running on ball bearings, and the detent is dialed in perfect. In fact, this is one of my best flipper knives. It rivals, or at least gets close to some of my zero tolerances. And I think the reason that is, is because this knife doesn't have very far to go open. You can see the whole thing's kind of C-shaped. It doesn't travel, you know, all the way up here. It's kind of stopping. It's got that very nice curve. So the distance that the blade is traveling is not very far. The flipper tab is enormous. And it will do a light switch very well. The, the push button, I'm still kind of working out, but you can do it. And then you have this nicely chamfered off hole or oval here that you can use with your thumb or your middle finger. Flick it out like a spider co, rotate it out. I mean, the detent is dialed in for just about whatever way you want to open it. And of course, you can throw a zip tie through this thing and make it ultra tactical. But overall, guys, I, I mean, I like the blade shape and its function. It's very well done. It's kind of rounded on the spine. It's got a nice chamfered hole, and the action is just amazing. Now, the lock up here is stainless steel liner lock. Get closer here. You can see hitting right around 50, 60%. The lock up is just crazy solid, which is good to see because I think this knife was intended for some tactical or self defense applications, and I wanted to test that out. You know, I 
doing some hard cutting with it, and I, I decided to do some some puncturing or stabbing tasks, especially in reverse grip because it fits so nice. And that liner lock fails every time. And I'm not talking that the lock breaks or bends, I'm just talking it slips out because it's a liner lock. There's nothing holding it in place. The lock bar tension isn't insanely tight. And that's why I don't think this knife is good for tactical use is because it's a liner lock and it does like to slip out. And I'm no expert in tactical applications of knives, but I definitely wouldn't want my lock slipping out on me. So that being said, what role is this knife good at before we talk at the handle? Unique EDC. That's kind of all there is to it. So the handle here is 3D Contour G10, and there is a whole hell of a lot of contouring here. Nice chamfered edges. It's got a texture to it, um, but it's not grippy. It's just kind of a, maybe I can show you guys. It's textured, but it's mostly contoured, and that contouring feels amazing in your hand. This knife is... 0.6 something inches thick so it's it takes up a little bit of space in your pocket but it feels really nice in hand now the ergonomics on this knife are very good if you have a certain hand size and that hand size is around my hand size you can see here your pinky goes in the ring three fingers just kind of nest where they're supposed to and it fits great you can get up on top of the blade here you can use this little divot back here for your thumb fits great and reverse grip is i think a even a little bit better open that thing up put it in your reverse grip and you're really locked into place. Now, if you have any bigger hand, this is not gonna fit and any smaller hand, it's gonna feel a little bit weird because there's very pronounced finger choils for each one of your fingers. So I would suggest handling this knife before you're gonna buy it. Now, one nitpick I have here is that the, the finger guard caused by the flipper is a little bit oddly shaped because this flipper is so curved. You can see here that if I'm gonna be doing some hard cutting, that really digs into my finger. I wish this was more of more flattened out back here, not so so angled, but it's definitely something I can live with. Construction on this thing is full stainless steel liners, those G10 handle scales. You got standoff here, and then your ring kind of acts as your backspacer, which is also chamfered off in every way possible, which is very cool to see. It's a very small ring, so your, your fingers are not gonna fit in this with gloves, so I can almost guarantee it. I mean, my, my pointer finger has a has almost no room without a glove. So, like I said, bigger hand, guys, this knife is not for you. Um, of course, you can use that ring as some sort of impact tool, whatever you want. Here, I got a question for you guys. This jimping here just seems so... I mean, it's not very sharp or anything like that. I, I just don't know what it's good for. I thought in a reverse grip my thumb would lay there, but this, it just doesn't. I mean, the, the knife's too small. And then in a, in a normal saber grip or hammer grip, that nothing really touches that jimping. So I'm curious as to know what this is for. If you guys know, definitely let me know in the comments. That'll focus for us. So you can see here, very cool look as far as colors go. It's black and satin finish, and you, and you think that's kind of boring. But these, the ring, the liners, the clip, everything's got a nice shine to it that contrasts very well. I mean, even the hardware does with the G10. Construction as far as fit and finish is awesome. I mean, there's no gaps between those those liners and that G10. Everything's nice and flush. And one fit and finish thing I want to note here, look how close that edge comes to that hole. You can see here the point is right there. And you can barely not touch it. I'm talking very high tolerances here. That I mean, even a millimeter or two this way, I mean, you'd be cutting yourself every time you put your finger in that ring. But it's just flush enough, which is awesome. The pocket clip design is actually one of my favorite pocket clips to date, even though you're still going to have, you know, an inch or so hanging out of your pocket, maybe even a little bit more. That's kind of what you have to do if you're going to have a karambit style folder, but it is deep carry style with a loop over and you can reverse it to the other side, put it in there. Works very well. This pocket clip is also on the Caracal from Boker Plus. It's another D2 flipper folding knife that I think I'd like even a little bit more than this Boker Plus Wildcat. So all in all guys, this is a very well-built knife. It's costing you around $76 on Blade HQ right now. It's a good size for EDC. And if you like karambits, you like flipping them around, which I'm not very good at, but it is fun. You can open it in all these different ways. This thing is very cool. It's very fun and it's very well built, <laughs> but it's not the king of EDC knives. And I definitely don't think it's a tactical knife. So do I recommend it? No, I don't. I think it's something cool. 
I'm going to keep it around because I personally like it, but I, you know, I'm not going to tell you guys to go out and buy it because I think Boker Plus makes a whole lot of better folders. This thing is just unique, and sometimes you need some differentiation between you know your knife collection. So thanks for watching, guys. As always, and remember, have fun with your knives.